This lecture is about uh, using a time series as context to potentially discover causal topics in text. In this lecture, we're going to continue discussing contextual text mining. In particular, we're going to look at the time series uh, as a context for analyzing text to potentially discover causal topics. As usual, let's start with the motivation. In this case, we hope to use text mining to understand a time series. Here what you are seeing is uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, stock price curves and you see a sudden drop here. Right? So one would be interested in knowing what might have caused the stock market crash. Well, if you know the background and you might be able to figure it out if you look at the timestamp or there are other data that can help us figure it out. But the question here is, can we get some clues about this from the companion news stream? And we have a lot of news data that are generated during that period. So if you do that, we might actually discover uh, the crash actually happened at the time of September 11 attack. And that's a time when there is a sudden rise of the topic about the September 11 attack in news articles. Here's another scenario where we want to analyze the presidential um, election. And this is the time series data from a presidential prediction market. Uh, for example, IY electronic market uh, would have stocks for each candidate. And if you believe one candidate will win, then you tend to buy the stock for that candidate, causing the price of that candidate uh, to increase. So that's a nice way to actually do survey of people's opinions about these candidates. Now, suppose you see a sudden drop of price for one candidate. You might also want to know what might have caused the sudden drop. Or uh, in a social science study, you might uh, be interested in knowing what mattered in this election, what issues really mattered to people. Now, again, in this case, we can look at the companion news stream and ask the question, are there any clues in the news stream that might uh, provide insight about this? So for example, we might discover the mention of tax cut uh, has, um, has been increasing since that point. So maybe that's related to the drop of the price. So all these cases are special cases of a general problem of joint analysis of text and the time series data to discover causal topics. The input in this case is a time series plus uh, text data that are produced in the same time period the companion text stream. And this is, see, this is different from uh, the standard topic models where we have just a text collection. And again, that's why we say time series here uh, serves as context. Now the output that we want to generate uh, is the topics whose coverage in the text stream has strong correlations with the time series. For example, whenever the topic is mentioned, the price tends to go down, etc. Now we call these topics causal topics. Of course, uh, they are not uh, strictly speaking you know, uh, causal topics, or so we are never going to be able to verify whether they are causal um, or there's a true causal relationship here. That's why we put uh, causal uh, in quotation marks. But at least they are correlated topics that might potentially explain the cause, and humans can certainly further analyze such topics to, to understand the issue better. And the output so uh, would uh, contain topics just like in topic modeling. But we hope these topics are not just regular topics. We, these topics certainly don't have to explain the data the best in text, but rather they have to uh, explain the data in the text, meaning that they have to represent meaningful topics in text, semantically coherent topics. But also, more importantly, they should be uh, correlated with the external time series that given as a context. So to understand how we solve this problem, let's first just to solve the problem with a regular topic model, for example, PLSA, and we can apply this to text streams. And with some extension like a CPLSA or contextual PLSA, then we can uh, discover these topics in the collection and also discover their coverage over time. So one simple solution is to choose the topics from this set that have the strongest correlation with the external time series. 
But this approach is not going to be very good. Why? Because uh, we are restricted to the topics that were discovered by PLSA or LDA. And that means the choice of topics will be very limited. And we know these models try to maximize the likelihood of the text data. So those topics tend to be the major topics that explain the text data well. And they are not necessarily correlated with time series. Even if we get the best one, the most correlated and the topics might still not be so um, interesting from causal perspective. So here in this work site here, uh, a better approach was proposed. And this approach is called iterative causal topic modeling. The idea is to uh, do an iterative uh, adjustment of topic, uh, topics discovered by topic models using time series to induce a prior. So here's an illustration of how this, work, how this works. Take the text stream as input. We're going to apply regular topic modeling to generate a number of topics. Let's say four topics shown here. And then we're going to use the external time series to um, assess which topic is more causally related or correlated with the external time series. So we can certainly rank them. And we might figure out that topic one and topic four are more correlated and topic two and topic three are not. Now we could have stopped here and that would be just like the simple approach that I talked about earlier. Right? Then we can get to these topics and call them causal topics. But as I also explained, these topics are unlikely very good because they are um, general topics that explain the whole text collection. They are not necessarily the best topics that are, cor are correlated with our time series. So what we can do in this approach is to further zoom into word level. And we're going to look into each word in the top ranked word list for each topic. Let's say uh, we take topic one as uh, the target to examine. We know topic one is um, correlated with the time series, or is at least the best that we could get from this set of topics so far. And we're going to look at the, the words in this topic, the top words. And if the topic is correlated with the time series, there must be some words that are highly correlated with the time series. So here, for example, we might discover W1 and W3 are positively correlated with time series, but W2 and W4 are negatively correlated. So as a topic, and it's not good to mix these um, words with different correlations. So we can then further separate these words. We are going to get all the red words that indicate uh, uh, positive correlations W1 and W3 and we're going to also get another uh, subtopic if you uh, if you want uh, that represents the negatively correlated uh, words W2 and W4. Now these subtopics or these variations of topics based on the correlation analysis are topics that are still quite uh, related to the original topic topic one but they are already deviating because of the use of uh, time series information to bias the selection of words. So they, in some sense, well, we should expect so, um, they are in some sense more correlated with the time series than the original topic one, because the topic one has mixed uh, words. Here we separate them. So each of these two subtopics uh, can be expected to be better correlated with time series. However, they may not be so coherent semantically. So the idea here is to go back to topic model by using these uh, each as a prior to further guide the topic modeling. And that's to say we ask our topic models to now discover topics that are very similar to each of these two subtopics. And this will cause uh, a bias toward uh, more correlated topics with a time series. Of course, then we can apply topic models to get another generation of topics, and that can be further ranked based on the time series to select the highly correlated topics. Then we can further analyze uh, the component words in the topic and then try to analyze word level correlation, and then get even uh, more correlated uh, subtopics that can be further fed into the process as prior to drive the topic of uh, model discovery. So this whole process is just a heuristic way of optimizing causality and coherence. And that's our ultimate goal, right? So here you see uh, the pure topic models will uh, be very good at uh, maximizing topical coherence. The topicals will be all meaningful. 
if we uh, only use causality uh, test or correlation measure, then we might get a set of words that are strongly correlated with time series, but they may not necessarily mean anything. They might not uh, be semantically connected. So that would be at the other extreme on the top. Now the ideal is to get a causal topic that's scored high both in topical coherence and also causal relation. And this approach can be regarded as an alternate way to maximize both dimensions. So when we apply the topic models, we're maximizing the coherence. But when we decompose the topic model words into sets of words that are strongly, very strongly correlated with time series, we select the most strongly correlated words with the time series, we are pushing the model uh, back to the causal uh, dimension to make it uh, better in causal scoring. And then when we apply the, uh, the selected words as a prior to guide the topic modeling, we again go back to optimize the coherence because topic models will ensure the next generation of topics to be coherent. And we can iterate it and optimize in this way as shown on this picture. So the only I think uh, component that you haven't seen in such a framework is uh, how to measure the causality because the rest is just topic model. So let's have a little bit discussion of that. So here we show that uh, let's say we have a topic about government response here and then with topic model we can get the coverage of the topic over time. So we have a time series x sub t. Now we also have, are given a time series that represents external information. It's a non-text time series, y sub t, let's say stock prices. Now the question here is, uh, does x t cause y t? Or in other words, we want to measure the causality relation between the two. Or maybe just measure the correlation of uh, the two. Now there are many measures that we can use in this framework. Uh, for example, Pearson correlation is a commonly used measure. And we can consider time lag here so that we can try to capture causal relation using mm, somewhat the past data, uh, data um, in, using the data in the past um, to try to uh, correlate that with the data uh, on points on Y uh, that, uh, that represents the future, for example. And by introducing such lag, we can uh, hopefully capture some causal relation by even using correlation measures like Pearson correlation. But a commonly used measure for causality uh, here is a Granger causality test. And the idea of this test is actually quite simple. Basically, uh, you're going to have an autoregressive model to use the history information of Y to predict itself. And this is the best we could do without any other information. So we're going to build such a model. And then we're going to add some history information of X into such a model to see if we can improve the prediction of Y. If we can, if we can do that uh, with statistical significant difference, then we just say X has some causal um, inference on Y. Or otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, caused the improvement of prediction of Y. If, on the other hand, the difference is insignificant and that would mean x uh, does not really have a causal relation with y. And so that's the basic idea. Now we don't have time to explain this in detail so um, you could uh, read but you could read this cited reference here to know more about this measure. It's a very uh, frequently used measure and has very many applications. So next uh, let's look at some sample results uh, generated by this approach. And here the data is in New York Times and in the time period of June 2000 through December of 2011. And here the time series we used is stock prices of two companies, American Airlines and Apple. And the goal here is to see if we inject some time series bias or time series context, whether we can actually get topics that are biased towards this time series. Imagine if we don't use any input, we don't use any context, then the topics from New York Times discovered by PLSA would be you know, just general topics that people talk about in news, right? those major topics in the news event. But here you see these topics are indeed uh, biased toward each time series. In particular, if you look at the underlying words here, in the American Airlines result, and you see airlines, airport, air, um, United Trade, terrorism, etc. So it, it clearly has topics 
and that are more correlated with the external time series. On the right side, you see uh, that some of the topics are clearly related to Apple. Right? So you can see computer technology, software, internet, com, web, etc. So that just means the time series has effectively served as a context to bias the discovery of topics. From another perspective, these results help us uh, what people have talked about um, in each case. Uh, so in the uh, or not just the people what people have talked about, but uh, what are some topics that might be correlated with their stock prices? And so these topics can serve as a starting point for people to further look into uh, the issues and to find the true causal relations. Here are some other results from um, analyzing presidential uh, election and time series. Uh, and the, the time series data here is from Iowa Electronic Market, and that's a prediction market. And the data is the same, New York Times from the, uh, May 2000 to October 2000, that's for 2000 uh, presidential campaign uh, election. Now, what you see here are the top three words in significant topics from New York Times. And if you look at these topics, and they are indeed quite related to the campaign. Uh, actually, uh, here, the issues are very much related to the important issues of this uh, presidential election. Now here I should mention that the, the text data has been filtered by using only the articles that mention these candidate names. And, um, so it's a subset of these um, news articles, very different from the previous experiment. But uh, the results here clearly show that the approach can uncover some uh, important issues in that presidential uh, election. So tax cut, oil energy, abortion, and gun control are all known uh, to be important issues in that uh, presidential election. And that was supported by some literature in political science. And also uh, that was discussed in Wikipedia. Right. So basically the results show that the, it, the approach can effectively discover possibly causal topics uh, based on the time series data. So there are two suggested readings here. One is uh, the paper about this iterative uh, topic modeling with time series feedback, where you can find more details about how this approach works. And the second one is a reading about the uh, granular causality test. So um, in the end, let's summarize uh, the discussion of text-based prediction. Now, text-based prediction is generally very useful for big data applications that involve text because it can help us infer new knowledge about the world and the knowledge can go beyond what's discussed in the text. As a result, it can also support uh, uh, optimizing of our decision making, and this has widespread applications. Um, text data is often combined with non text data for prediction, because for this purpose, the prediction purpose, we generally would like to combine non text data and text data together, get as much crew as possible for prediction. And so as a result, joint analysis of text and non-text is uh, very necessary and it's also very useful. Now when we analyze text data together with non-text data, we can see uh, they can help each other. So non-text data provide a context for mining text data. And we discussed a number of techniques for contextual text mining. And on the other hand, text data can also help uh, interpret the patterns discovered from non-text data and this is called a pattern annotation. And in general, this is a very active research topic and there are still new papers being published and there are also many open challenges that have to be solved.